One, two, three. Good. Okay. I'm uh, just going to see a few more people uh, coming in, so I'll wait till they get a chance to sit down and then I'll get started. All right. Uh, good afternoon. Um, thank you for coming. I know it's uh, a little late in the day, so I appreciate the, uh, the effort I, of will it will be to stay awake. <laughs> so, what is Fedora.next? Fedora.next is a plan that uh, has been evolving over the last uh, about a year, uh, maybe a little longer than that. Um, and it's, it's been an effort to try and address some of the issues that Fedora sees with its declining, uh, declining contributor base. And uh, actually, I don't, I don't know how many of you were here for, uh, for Donnie's talk early, uh, earlier today. Uh, Okay, a, a few of you. Uh, he had some uh, some great metrics, and I, I, I wish I'd had a chance to uh, steal them from him before I, I got up on stage. Uh, but he, he he did some uh, interesting analysis of various distros and how much they're being talked about on Hacker News, on uh, Linux Journal, and on uh, Google uh, Google Trends. And uh, the results were not good <laughs> for Fedora. Fedora, and 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 we've had a sense of this for a long time that. Fedora has not been doing, uh, it, it has just not been the exciting new place to do, uh, to do stuff. It's not, it, it's, it's kind of, uh, we, we've gotten the impression that the community kind of views us as a commodity. We're just that layer that works and nobody cares about it anymore. So with the Fedora.next initiative, we're trying to bring a little bit of that excitement back uh, still to, to those platform layers, but remind people that there's still a lot of work to be done there and still a lot of opportunity to make something better. Um, so part of the, uh, one of the big pieces of the Fedora.next initiative is that Fedora historically has been one gigantic collection of packages that usually installs about every six months. Uh, we, do a, we do a release and on, you know, on that day it's tested and you know, it's, it's always the latest bits, uh, generally with as, as little uh, modification as possible just to get, get them onto a system. There, it, there really hasn't been a driving goal of Fedora except for get as much stuff into Fedora as possible. So we stopped and we took a look at this and we decided that's probably not going to sustain us and it's obviously not, al not doing it already. So what we really need is we need to take a step back and figure out what is it that we can do that would give Fedora some definition and a goal? So we took a look at, uh, this was at FUDCON uh, in uh, Lawrence, Kansas. We, we had a, a, a long discussion, I think it was most of a day, with, uh, with a lot of people just listing out Fedora's strengths and weaknesses. And what we found were that most of the time, our weaknesses were, we were, trying to, uh, were when we were trying to try to solve the needs of two different groups at the same time. That it, made, that it really might make sense for Fedora to be willing to address different groups with a different deliverable, a different product uh, is what we're calling them. So we, we took a look and we decided that we were going to break Fedora install media, uh, Fedora as what you can get off of our website, into three, uh, three basic concepts. Um, something we're calling Fedora Workstation, something we're calling Fedora Server, and something we're calling Fedora Cloud. So the first and arguably the most contentious right now is the Fedora Workstation. Um, about couple, uh, two weeks ago, we had, a, we had uh, the conclusion of our first round of Fedora.next uh, deliverables. And what those were was we, we organized a group of peop uh, groups of people to manage each of these products and come up with essentially a PRD. Not a marketing document, but a, a, a set of goals and driving principles for their version of Fedora. So the Fedora workstation, what we realized was that one thing that Fedora needs to be better at is helping people build Fedora. We need a, we need a platform that they can use that is the easiest and most effective way to do development and, uh, and packaging and deployment on Fedora. So we, asked, we tasked the Fedora workstation group to figure out what kind of what kind of target users, what kind of things can we do to enhance the developer experience on Fedora? So they, start, they, they, they decided to select 
uh, four u uh, target users, four sets of people uh, for which this is what the workstation product will care about. And they're on the board. I'm not going to read it at you because that's lame. But they're, uh, this is something that historically the, the the desktop uh, spins in Fedora have always been technology spins. They've always been about, well, there's the GNOME upstream, and there's the KDE upstream, and there's the XFCE upstream, and there's the whatever f favorite window manager you've got upstream. And we're going to just stick all those in Fedora. We're going to give us different spins so you can install whichever one you want. And that's as much of it as we're going to care about. And that's not enough. We, we need Fedora to be producing some sort, of a, some sort of a workstation that, the, that you can use to get something done and not just be a technology preview for the upstream work. Upstreams do great work, but they don't do integration work. And that's where a distribution it can, it can make a difference. Uh, the Fedora server is, uh, this is the one that I'm most heavily involved with. This is, uh, I'm on the working group for the Fedora server. And uh, how many here are familiar with the uh, pets and cattle metaphor before I? Okay, far too few of you, so, uh, so, I'll, uh, so I'll give it to you this way. Um, historically, you, yeah, there are two, there are, or not historically, but there are two ways that you can manage services in, a, uh, in your environment. Um, and, the, and they're generally referred to by pets or cattle. Um, when, you have a, when you have a pet, you take care of it. If it gets sick, you take it to the vet. You do whatever you can to help it. With cattle, your, your, you know, your cow goes dry, you have a hamburger, and you get another cow. <laughs> so with the pets versus cattle uh, metaphor, the idea is your, your, your critical infrastructure, those things that you cannot live without that have to be rock solid and always there, things like your DNS server and possibly your domain controller, these are probably going to be your, uh, your pets. These are the ones that you're going to keep uh, carefully cult cultivated and make sure that they are always uh, up and running. Pro possibly your uh, your infrastructure as a service infrastructure uh, will be will end up being uh, we, we hope Fedora server. So what this what this is is it's 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 our it's Fedora's way of developing the next generation of critical infrastructure, the sort of thing that's going to become RHEL server, the thing that's going to become CentOS 8 eventually. The, this is the technology that we're going to focus on in, uh, in Fedora Server, and we're also going. But it's not just going to be make sure that the platform is rock solid. We're also going to be building infrastructure to do uh, manage deployments of common tasks. Things like, okay, that machine over there is now a domain controller. You add, you you tell it what domain it is, and that's basically all the information you need. It, it goes off and is that machine. Um, over here, you've got your, you know, you you just stand up a Postgres SQL server. Here's the credentials for it, and now you can start uh, start uh, deploying applications against it. These are these are lofty goals, and they're going to be uh, very difficult to uh, actually implement. And we're actually we're actively going to be requesting help on ideas for how to get th these things done. But I'm going to move uh, move on because I don't want to actually spend too much time talking about the. Uh, the, the individual pieces here, because I want this to be a, a workshop. Uh, but so I'm going to get on to the for Fedora Cloud is the cattle side of our pets versus cattle metaphor, and it's going to be a series of small images uh, built in a variety of, of different uh, infrastructure as a service systems, things uh, as deployable systems to run OpenShift, to run OpenStack, to uh, to run you know Fedora in an in an Amazon environment, Fedora in um, uh, Bitnami environment. All, uh, uh, these are the sort of things that Fedora Cloud should be uh, should be servicing. Um, there, you know, there's going to be a heavy focus on how do we serve DevOps needs. How do we serve? Uh, how do we serve the case where we want to have these uh, these you know disposable machines that we cut uh, th that we can just cut and paste and you know if you get a sudden uh, you know spike in load because you got uh, you know you got on the front page of Slashdot um, that you can just Call up your provider and say, "Spin up ten more of those." So, uh, w with that in mind, um, like I said, we, we, we put together uh, this this plan, and uh, we we had our first PRDs that went through the uh, the Fedora Engineering Steering Committee for approval uh, two weeks ago or last week, a little of both. Um, and we, we've pretty much settled on that these are the goals that we want this 
chunk of Fedora to be uh, focusing on. And now we're into our execution phase, our planning phase, really, where we figure out how it is we're going to do that. So I'd like, I'd really like to uh, engage the audience for uh, for uh, for some ideas, some plans, you know, things that we should do, things that we should watch out for. Uh, you know, horror stories in the past of other people that have tried this and failed, what they did wrong. Um, so that's where I'm going to go. But uh, first, actually, I want to ask: uh, Could I get a show of hands? Anyone uh, who in here uh, was served on one of the uh, working groups that uh, had a PRD submitted? So, okay, actually, a surprising number of you—about uh, eight, I think. So uh, I'm going to applaud you because you guys did a lot of hard work with very limited uh, with very limited resources and very and very limited uh, uh, constraints. So you guys did a fantastic job. So. That is basically all I have for a presentation. What I'm looking for now is start shouting things at me. Sorry, Joe. Uh, Joe I know that's going to be hard to record, but we do have a microphone um, that we can use. So if you can just organize your questions by row. <laughs> a gentleman in the uh, awesome shirt right there. Just pass this over. You have to tell me where you got that after the presentation. <laughs> My name is Peter Neminkov, and I g I'd like to ask, I'm, I think, a very simple question. Uh, you told me, you told us that you gave some metrics about a possible decline of Fedora community base, but why you don't ask the Fedora community well, it's very difficult to ask someone who isn't there if they're not there anymore. Well, maybe you can ask them about potential issues which could sure. prevent them to move further. Uh, yes, and, and we, do, we, you know, we, listen to our, we listen to our community, and, there, and we do have a pretty active, uh, if self-selected, group of people who gripe on the, uh, on the devel list reg regularly. Uh, another, another, another one flow is what you uh, digging for metrics in the wrong in the wrong place because we have already a lot of metrics for example we have fedora accounting servers we c you could uh, try to dig it try we've to done that uh, we, ha we, ha we have done that uh, part of the problem is that there are a lot of accounts in fedora uh, account service that are ancient that haven't been touched in a decade there are a lot of uh, um, you know you can't, we can't necessarily just go by package commit ma metrics because that doesn't tell us what, you know who's working on the websites who's working on it, it, it's very difficult to get a clear picture of uh, of the decline we, we've gotten we have we have had a number of people do a fair number of metrics on the system uh, on this and, and there is no universally metrics. well universally they all show a sharp decline um, mm -hmm. they, they they all they all vary on how you know what they estimate the number of active contributors are but they all agree that they are they are less than half of what they were six years ago well you should ask those who who stop working for, for the reasons I, I do believe uh, you're doing the wrong way because Googling something, uh, using Google Trends is not an answer. I mean, I mean, it's just well, it's, well, it's not very well. And another one question. I mean, uh, you told us about free potential uh, products on top of Fedora based on the Fedora packages, packages base. Base will be the same packages used in all these free products. I mean, yes. as a as a Fedora packagers, I am a packager. I'm very concerned about additional work you are. As, of, uh, as of right now, Fesco uh, has resolved to stick with uh, uh, to stick with the uh, one one universal package set, uh, while allowing the uh, the individual uh, the individual products may be allowed to manually configure packages in different ways but they but they must all be using the same bits or at least be building sub packages from them that if they need to make variant uh, variants can I uh, participate <coughs> I'm Alexandra Fedorova and I'm want to uh, ask if you think the reason why uh, contributor base of Fedora is declining uh, is uh, probably the idea that people don't see they can um, influence Fedora right now because they think that Fedora is uh, moving in its own way and any kind of initiative they have uh, they cannot uh, apply it in Fedora and this PRD requirements something uh, it makes it worse because right now this well, um, these, these weren't <laughs> <laughs> you know what sure absolutely this is a discussion not just a Q&A <laughs> so stuff gets done by the people that show up and I find that the people who often have the attitude of, I don't know if I can influence that because it doesn't look friendly enough, are often not ones that do a lot. 
um, that are waiting. If you're waiting in open source for an invitation, I mean, we have issued them, and we have. That's how I got involved in the PRD because I'm relatively new to Fedora, and that's how I got inv involved in the Cloud Sig because I came over from working on cloud stack and got involved in the cloud sig and i'm like um can i do this and you know they had matt sent out an invitation to work on the cloud sig work group and i shot up a hand and i said i will do it yeah um, I, I i neglected to mention that in the original presentation that all of this prd work was done after an open call for participation with anyone who was a with anyone at all who thought they uh, they might have something to add to it you know, this was this was not a this was not as some as some members of our community uh, assert a, a red hat dominated uh, and ordered process. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, when I say making plans for a year, I mean that these have been uh, t discussed at every conference we've uh, we've been to. And I know I know that not everybody gets to conferences, but we do always take it back to the mailing lists afterwards. So. No, 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 no. When I what I said what I said was that for the last couple of years, year and a half, about uh, we have been we have been monitoring the decline. As of about F uh, FUDCON Lawrence, we have had, we have started make has started trying to put together a plan to address it. So that's that's that was what the, about a, about a year ago. Yeah. We yeah. Could you pass her the mic? I can't I can't hear her. I'm sorry. I mean, it's just for no, people outside of a uh, very Fedora core group, uh, which is like Red Headers and some other known, well-known persons in Fedora community. It's hard for them to start doing something in Fedora. For example, with where is this uh, Qt Razor Qt group uh, with uh, their own uh, plans for desktop environment, but they right now they don't fit uh, in this uh, workstation PRD and this. Is it's hard for them to get into this sure. uh, special interest group of something because no one knows about them. How should they start? How should they force people to listen to them? Uh, well, the best way to start would actually be to send a message to Fedora Announce. Uh, you know, if you announce, uh, "Hey, I want to form a SIG. Here's the here's the things we want to accomplish." That'll get through the uh, through the uh, the queue. Yeah, that'll, but that'll the, get a program. The problem is <laughs> that now this workstation group is uh, fr made from GNOME developers. And no one actually, from well, outside actually, can... Uh, actually, for is there anyone here from the workstation group, uh, working group, first of all, because I'd rather have them answer this, but uh, anyone of the, of the people that raised their hands earlier that want to admit they work for this group? <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> I, I don't mean this is a bad idea. I mean that we should uh, care about uh, how we how open um, this process is, not from the point of we publish and everything, but also from the point that there are people who don't have prior exp experience with Fedora. They don't have uh, this uh, level of... Uh, they are not known the for only, Fedora uh, community. The only answer I can give there is that the only way to get experience in the community is to participate in the community. There, uh, there no. I, I have never met anyone in the Fedora community <laughs> Well, okay. There, 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 there are about two people in the Fedora, Fedora community that are not welcoming to new contri contributions. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, but, but I mean, uh, this. It, 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 I, 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 I was, I was okay. speaking in jest, but in, in general, I mean, if you if you come up forward and say, "I'm going to do this," everyone's going to do this. Yeah, I, I think we've got a, a no, no offense, but we're kind of limiting the participation here. Um, it's Icon from the Cloud Walking Group. I have a question for the audience. I, I was going to say I wouldn't actually necessarily say that. I selected, uh, uh, you know, I selected a few people for the server working group that hadn't, uh, that didn't have a long history with Fedora, but were clear that were were clear, clearly had an interest in making sure that Fedora was a powerful server platform. For example, uh, Jim Perrin of the Cent of CentOS, um, uh, you know, is a member of the server working group, uh, and. You know uh, that was prior to the <laughs> Red Hat uh, Red Hat uh, CentOS merger, but you know I, I wanted to you know I, I when I selected uh, initially the uh, working groups were selected by a representative from Fesco and then they formed their own uh, uh, they formed their own uh, election process for how they would select members after that 
Um, so my initial selection, I picked a number of people, both with with experience and with and with uh, without. I have uh, people on on the server working group that are. Uh, relatively junior ambassadors, because I wanted to have people working on this that are coming coming at it from the perspective of how am I going to introduce people to Fedora. So I I, I, I think these groups can work, and they don't have to be all you know uh, insiders. And I think uh, and I think it depends. It really depends on the way the groups end up formulating themselves. They're their respective uh, governance uh, governance rules will allow them to filter groups uh, users out and in, in, in individually, but if any of them are not uh, listening to external contribution, uh, send them to me. I, I will have a word with them. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I ha I have a question, but it's to the audience. Uh, who is isn't here a federal developer or an employee of Red Hat? Raise your hand. <laughs> No, no, the reverse. People who are not contributing to Fedora today and not working to Red Hat, raise your hand. Just a quick census. Okay. Uh, could you tell us what are you interested in? Are you interested in joining Fedora or bringing uh, this experience to your own communities? Just asking because I'm or one of or we're just looking for a room that oh had spare God. seats. <laughs> okay, because I'm one of the working group monkeys, and I was interested in why people are coming here and what are their interests. Just uh, out of curiosity. Thank you. Did anybody want to answer, or trying to do another question? Somebody want to be the first victim? I mean, uh, respondent. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't be more convenient. <laughs> 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 I, I will try just to answer why I'm here, and, uh, and maybe it will help some uh, or start some dis discussion. Um, as my day job, I am full-time developer from some uh, uh, some agency, or whatever, and I use Fedora every day uh, at work and also at home. Um, some time ago, I tried to just uh, come in and. Uh, Solve a small problem I had. It was a, a small program that was uh, lacking in the further repository, and uh, I tried to to become uh, I to, to submit uh, some package for that. But um, aside of Fedora and my full time job, I have, I have an, a lot of other uh, activities, and just to have that small package that was a simple um, yeah. converter. I had to do to sign up a lot of stuff to to be uh, um, active to be active in uh, uh, trying or uh, participate to the maintenance of other packages and so on and so on. At that time, I had a, a, a slow computer, so building stuff took a lot of time, and I just stopped because there was no way for me to to just come with that small package and uh, and give it. Uh, I, I gave it. It's, it's still there on in my. Um, Get repository, uh, the spec file is still there, but I, I cannot find a way to, to have that pushed in, in, in Fedora uh, in a simple way. It, it was okay. uh, uh, too much time for me. And uh, with the working group, the, the proposal that I, I sometimes I, I follow up uh, on the wiki or the mailing list and so on, uh, my feeling is the same. If, if, if Fedora is not your full time job, it becomes difficult to participate. If you if you if That's your fair. only time is one hour per uh, per weekend, you're not welcome. Okay. Uh, it's difficult. Maybe I you're welcome, but it's difficult to, yeah. to 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 have your voice uh, so listened. So before I got more involved in Fedora, I was doing work on patching cloud stack, right? And that was my full-time job with Citrix. Was was doing that, and it is very. I don't. That is a problem that if you have an idea how to solve, I would love to hear because it's very. It is time intensive to contribute to something like that, and that's that's not a like Fedora doesn't want you. It's just it, it does take time. So and uh, I, I would like I would like to mention that we do have a working group uh, that is uh, addressing this specific problem. Uh, we have a, we have a, a, a there there are two other working groups that aren't directly uh, directly uh, involved in the products, and those are the base design working group and the environments and stacks working group. The latter is. Uh, 
The latter is also heavily involved in finding ways to to layer things so that you can uh, so that we can put f stuff on top of Fedora in a more sensible way. One of these uh, solutions that we that we've rolled out relatively recently is something we call uh, Copper, which I think is a cool other package repository. It's it's uh, it's our answer to Ubuntu's PPAs. Uh, different, a slightly different feature set, but essentially it's, it allows a Fedora community member who has just uh, who just has signed the uh, the, F the FPCA, which just says I won't do anything in Fedora that's illegal, um, to go and uh, to go and build an RPM that doesn't have to correspond to our packaging guidelines and offer it as a in a in a side repo that people can go and, and install, and that is the, and that we're encouraging as a means of. Uh, you know, as a first step to getting a package into Fedora, because if you get, you know, if people are using your your side repo, somebody is going to want to pick it up and pull it in, even if even if you don't have the time to do it. And if so, and it's also a good place for people to uh, try to stick, uh, you know, the next alpha or beta version of their package that isn't ready for Fedora, because we want to keep Fedora at least reasonably stable. We don't, you know, we don't want it to be breaking constantly. So perhaps we put the we put the experimental stuff in a side repo. Which also, again, doesn't necessarily have to go through all of the uh, mumbo jumbo of getting all of the, the, its dependencies into Fedora first, as, as, as a way to just get started in the community and get people excited about it, without having to do, without having to go through all of the hoops of our existing uh, c community. So I think that's a, a big step forward. <laughs> you keep talking about technical uh, implementation, like uh, this service as a PPA, but maybe we should organize a working group for mentoring and package reviewing. So this could yes. be like it's more about personal, person-to-person -person interactions, not about technical side of things. If you would like to, if you would like to, uh, if you would like to lead such an uh, such an advance, no, I'm not, I'm not joking. If you would like to lead such an advance, send a message to the list. I will see to it that people sign up. Okay. <laughs> Because that is that is a that is a very serious need, and it's it's one of the reasons why, at you know I think I think ten conferences a year we send someone to do a th build your first RPM workshop to te to help people learn this stuff, and, and build you know and we have the ambassadors at all the, at all of these uh, uh, these you know little stands and kiosks at at all of these events, and that's to address that problem. And we do have we do have a problem, but we don't have an organ we don't really have an organizational uh, skill for how to solve it. What me might not want is somebody who just drops in a package and then runs away and never maintains it really. So if you have not much time, it's probably well, again. Not that's why I suggested something like the Copers, which is outside yeah, of Fedora right. proper. And if it's ex and if it's interesting enough that it's that somebody wants it, it'll get pulled in. Okay. Okay. Yeah. By the time right now, by the time you've gone through all the first steps, you 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 must have you must be dedicated. And we we know this is a problem. I'd like to turn the page uh, a little bit. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about pace, Fedora release cycles pace. Are we are we considering changing the pace within the Fedora next? Uh, uh, because uh, what I see uh, when I when I compare um, server and cloud, then I see that cloud deserves maybe a faster pace while server deserves. So are we? Are those, are, we those are things that are uh, that are being discussed. Uh, the Fedora project as a whole will probably maintain a particular, uh, you know, its existing release cadence or adjust it very uh, very minimally. Whereas, yes, we may actually uh, we may allow the products to do releases uh, releases of their own as long as they can provide the Q the QE and rel end resources to do so at, at their own pace. Now, one thing that's been suggested for the Fedora server, for example, is that we actually only do a full release every two years, whereas in the middle we just do uh, essentially service packs and alphas of the next one. So uh, there there are discussions on how to do that while we so we maintain the cadence for the project where the products may be. Or may may be allowed to do something a little different. Um, I tried to get edit rights on uh, uh, Bugzilla. I find it way too difficult for something as simple. I think you have to sign stuff and so on. It couldn't be bothered. Uh, edit. What do you mean by edit rights? Uh, Triaging rights that you can change everything that you want. That uh, yeah, I can see why that would be difficult. Primarily because that infrastructure isn't provided by the Fedora project; it's provided by Red Hat, and there's and anyone with edit rights has access to potentially customer data, which which is a which is a risk. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we, we we have on several occasions tried to uh, tried to break from that, but it's just too expensive, manpower wise. Y you can have hidden products and at the same time, just be able to change existing bugs and so on. 
I'm not an expert in that domain, so I, I can't really answer that. Um, I, I, I try to uh, make small changes to bugs. Um, a few years ago, anyone can do that. Now, I don't know the process. It was way too complicated. I just stopped. Uh, at the risk of sounding glib, file a bug. Yeah, okay, but I'm now wor helping out at a, another distribution, I find it easier. So if you're asking like, okay, why don't people contribute, and someone says, well, yeah, if too you... Much uh, too much process is a, is a very clearly identified problem with Fedora, and it's something uh, we are going to be addre trying to address. Hi. I uh, still got a question back to the topic of Fedora Next. So for me, it's still not clear what the target of the whole process should be. Because uh, right now, it simply seems that you want to change the way installation goes, uh, maybe in form of uh, some different kind of spins or installation media. Uh, but uh, I cannot see the big picture. You told me uh, that uh, that might help to... to uh, Vitalize the community, maybe, uh, but from what we hear right now, uh, we got several different problems or areas where we need work and love to do uh, in order to get the community up and running. And this uh, uh, community problem, from my point of view, can hardly be fixed with this approach. So, could you perhaps point out the big picture of what you see and what the influence might be, uh, for example, for spins li sure. like the existing ones, like the KDE spin or so? Will sure disappear or will yeah they? well there's, there's a lot of ongoing discussion on that specific topic on the de devel list right now um, but uh, as far as the spin the individual spins uh, what we're trying to do with the the fedora uh, products is pr is provide three distinct platforms uh, our, our, pa our process our path here we hope is that first we want to make fedora a more inviting place to be a user because you never ever get a, con a, a contributor who wasn't first a user that just doesn't happen uh, what you, uh, so what we, what we want to do is we want to, instead of having ju uh, th just these tech technology previews, we want to be able to say, you want to use Fedora because it's the, it's the best place to do Ruby on Rails development, because that's, you know, that's going to be one, uh, one such focus. It's the best place to do, uh, uh, to do the development of these, uh, these top-level uh, top stacks, which people, which people are very interested in. So that's, that's, that's a target for the workstation, and we hope that we can use that to gain users, and then from users we start d uh, building our contributor base again. Similarly with the server, what, we're what we want to do is we want to be, be we want to, one of the things that I always cringe uh, to hear is people are always saying, even on our own mailing lists, oh, you should never use Fedora as a server, it's not stable. That's actually not really that true, and there are a lot of people that are using Fedora as a server, both, in, uh, both as pets and cattle. Um, and it's just th this cargo cult uh, mentality that Fedora isn't equipped for that is a problem. And by producing a product, we hopefully bring people back into realizing that that's a, ca a, a space we care about. And also, we can focus on making it the best place to do simple de deployments, so that uh, so that the you know the small and medium businesses of the world can uh, can get their you know cheap, free, powerful uh, open source solutions up without having to be uh, you know a, a graybeard with 30 years of experience. So, and I think with that, and also build, basing it as, you know, this is the tech, this is also not just stable, but the technology preview for what's going to be in the long term 10 years, a 10 year lifespan of the, of the RELs and CentOS is a little ways down the road. I want, uh, I want to be trying to uh, build, the, you know, to get the application developers, the, uh, the people who want to do these serious deployments, to be working with us to, uh, in the Fedora server so that they get whatever it is that they're going to want to have in place to, uh, to build on in two years. To, to do their big release, that we've already got it in place for them. We want to be the place they st they prep all of that stuff so they can launch when the CentOS 8 does. Um, I, I would actually rather have Matthew uh, give the description of the cloud f for me because he's uh, kind of our guru on that. So, if you don't mind. I was thinking about some of the other things other than that. It switched my mind. Oh, yeah. So uh, the Fedora Cloud image is. Partly, uh, you see things like CoreOS getting a lot of excitement, and Fedora has had a pretty good cloud guest image in Amazon EC2 and downloadable for OpenStack for a, 
a while in EC2 and downloadable for a couple of releases now, and it's pretty good, but I see that the usage and download numbers on it are a lot lower than its actual quality and utility. I'll put it that way. Um, and so it would be kind of nice to have um, some things that people can see, okay, here I see a reason to use Fedora for this and plug this in and it'll be a really good Docker container host. So if you're doing Docker container stuff, Fedora is going to be one of the best places to do that because we're going to have a SE Linux based security layer isolating containers from each other that something like CoreOS won't have. Uh, so we'll have some like this is why you should use Fedora in the cloud, and that's part of the answer there. And I think that's one of the things we kind of needed as we were going forward, because we had that cloud image, but nobody was really thinking about it at release time for Fedora, and somebody, you know, release engineering had to, like, quick spin it up at the last minute as an afterthought as part of the release process. So having the working group sort of is a way to formalize that and to get people other than me doing the work, really, is also part of the other thing, too. Uh, be, be, um, because it, um, it becomes a single point of failure, and it's nice to engage other community people in doing that as well. Um, I was trying to think about some of the things you said earlier too. Um, one of the uh, things I've been hearing in the last been a couple couple weeks is that on the one hand, everything has been decided in the back room and there's nowhere to plug in and there's this fast conspiracy to d uh, push something through. And then on the other hand, you guys don't have any specifics. What are you guys talking about? And the actual truth is, the reason there aren't any specifics, or not so many specifics, is because there was no secret backroom plan drawn up with a list of specifics. So we're talking to people and trying to actually figure out what the specifics are. And yeah, and this has been going on Fedora develop mailing list and stuff, stuff all in the open. Um, sometimes the um, Fesco IRC chats are reading along IRC logs, so that's that's open, but it's kind of hidden. So, um, But as things become more specific, I think we'll have more public communications about things, too. Right. I mean, I can uh, say a lot, a lot, a lot, but nobody listens to us. I mean, it really drives me angry. Because uh, the, these issues are uh, significant. These issues exa exist for years. These issues, uh, people know them. All of us know for these issues. But uh, people from the uh, stage are talking about Google, Google Trends, whatever else, but not about these particular uh, issues which are real stoppers from new users to try to join the community. I mean, I don't see a real value of talking about it. Yeah. So one of the things that um, uh, one of the things someone mentioned was that the package review process is very hard for getting your package in the first time. But so, as an example, this proper thing why it exists in the first place because code uh, yeah. stuff is utterly broken. I mean, it doesn't work as it should be. I love that the idea with badges and modernization, which I've been does almost uh, in a single, mm -hmm. but uh, real exists are not these ones. Real exists are not adding additional badges. Real, ex real, uh, real, things, real issues are, for example, I'm, I ca I should, I want the ability to upload a PM some SRC PM somewhere and build, build it in one step for all uh, existing um, uh, distributions, architectures yeah. and distribution. I still don't, didn't have this. I, I'd love to have an integration between Bugzilla, uh, Git, review, Git review process, but we still didn't, didn't use Fedora hosted. I'd love to see Fedora mostly hosted on GitHub. It's it'd be, uh, mm. problematic because of some. Yeah. Well, you, you right. won't see Fedora hosted on GitHub primarily because that would be in violation of, our, of, one, of one of our four foundations, GitHub, GitHub not being an open right. solution. Yeah, so there, there are a lot of infrastructure things that could be made better and improved. And yes. So we have, right. There are another issues. 
for example, we finally, finally found something, yep. someone who went Peter? through all that stuff. I, I, I would like I, I would like to hear you, to hear your thoughts, but you are kind of monopolizing the conversation. Why don't we have a conversation, the three of us, after the after I'd the talk? Love to. I I, I just I, I don't want to. Uh, yeah. I, I want to give everybody an opportunity to have their say too. All right, so one more thing, real quick. Then um, one of the things that I would like to see as part of the Fedora Next thing is sort of separation between some of the uh, more lightweight packages. Like I have something that's not packaged up in Fedora. I would like to make it available to people and have it be you know, part of the part of the distribution. And, and I think that the ability to get those things in should be at a different level from uh, I need to make a change to glibc, I want to change the file system, the kernel. And so it makes sense that those things get a really higher level of Obviously review when they're right at the you know basic level of the OS. And then things that are uh, packages that are added onto it um, probably we can make lighter procedures there. So I think that is one of the things. And then one of the other questions was about what happens to KDE and the Razor QT thing. Um, this is supposed to be an additive process, so we're supposed to be we're putting you know, some new things in Fedora that didn't exist before. But we don't want to throw out the things that are there and good. And so we would like we what? Which one? Which is going to be broken? So uh, so KDE, you know, even even if the um, desktop workstation SIG decides they're not going to base their thing on KDE, and I haven't. I've been busy traveling. I haven't followed what all that is, how the discussion is going, but I, you know, it's pretty likely that it's going to be a GNOME-based product. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we don't have KDE in the repository, and you can't just keep on using KDE as you always have. The, if you right. use the workstation product, you get some other different things. So if you're a software developer and you come into Fedora and say, "I'm going to want a desktop for my software development," oh, I see there's this product targeting me. Awesome, that's what I want. But if you look at it and you're like, "Oh, that's not what I want." Well, we still have all the other stuff in Fedora, and we're not going to but throw that there's out. There's a problem with GDM, for example. People from right. workstation group says that My every other... Yeah. Uh, it's like from this product requirement, it was said something like every uh, desktop uh, session should uh, work with GDM, for example, which is uh, inappropriate for KDE or Razor QT. We don't, work, don't want to work with GDM. Why uh, this workstation group put it inside? So there's a, a yeah. lot of problems when you choose right. one direction as a main one. <laughs> Sorry. What it, uh, what it means is that in order to be, uh, in order to be, to receive the tag that says you are Fedora, uh, you are compliant with f the Fedora workstation set of requirements, you must work with GDM. It does not mean that you can that you cannot use KDM or LightDM in the in but Fedora. But this is a dangerous it, way. It's it's you, so you well, start with. If, if, if I could, if I if I could, well, again, what these these three products are is really they're an, they're an assertion of a set of uh, things that you can rely on. They're they're an assertion that the system that. In order to be Fedora Workstation or Fedora, ser Fedora Server, you can make the assumption that up to this level, these set of packages and these set of APIs and these se uh, set of uh, interfaces are available to you. And by doing that, what we're, what, what we're saying is if you are Fedora Workstation, it does mean that you are using GDM. If you switch it out, you're technically not Fedora Workstation, but you're, not, you're still Fedora. Uh, one year GDM is maybe this means sure. that Workstation Group is not the desktop group. So there should There's be a very large desktop overlap. group, which is that. different. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, workstation group shouldn't decide for other desktop environments. They're not deciding for other disc desktops. If, the, uh, if other desktops, it, it, what what the, what they are trying to leave open is the possibility that if another desktop wants is willing to uh, to at least provide the uh, the same set of interfaces and then their 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 environment, then they can still be considered for Dora workstation. The first one to d to implement that will most likely be GNOME, but it doesn't. Uh, the idea is that it should not restrict the possibility that XFCE could still offer all the same public interfaces, or KDE, or any of them. Yeah. Let's. Uh, thank you. I have one. Um, with the release sc scheme, have you thought about um, making, uh, if you, if Fedora Server maybe comes only every two years, um, uh, thought about um, doing more rolling release for the uh, main parts or the, f the package uh, um, set? It, it has come up. Um, no decision has been made at this point, although 
when you get right down to it, more or less rawhide since we turned on, uh, since we turned installable uh, composes back on is more or less already an overrolling release. But, but rawhide has exper per experimental stuff, so yes. that's not something you'd use on your uh, daily machine. Well, uh, again, that, that's one. Uh, one, one th there is effort from certain uh, sides to make rawhide a little more stable by sig by strongly uh, leveraging copper for those things that aren't re that aren't re stable enough for rawhide. So that rawhide itself maintains its it maintains a, a level of installability, if not a guarantee of behavior. Can I get? An, uh, is there anyone else with questions? How much time do I have? You have four minutes. I have four minutes. Really have time for like one more question? Anybody? Ah. Uh. Yeah. Um, uh, for me, it. Uh, thanks for the explanation. First of all, uh, for me, it now sounds like you try to sharp the uh, uh, sharp out some products for Fedora to make up some clean targets. But what uh, what we got right now is that we got several spins and deri derivatives. We also already got a cloud image uh, uh, which might need uh, some love, but it's there and there are still maybe we need a server image, that's too. But why don't we keep the existing infrastructure as it is? Because one of the strengths of Fedora is the flexibility, is the uh, amount of different flavors that is available right now. Sure, and so right uh, as, as of right now, we have no plans to uh, re restrict that at all. Okay. Uh, we, the, okay. The, the, that the only thing like that might okay. change is that the, they may not be pre uh, uh, promoted as pre as prevalently on the website. It may be that the website leads the focus towards the products. But, but that's, that's the case with the GNOME spin decision. already? Okay. Right. Well, that's not a decision that's been finalized either, but that seems mm -hmm. likely that these three things will be right on the front page, oh, and then okay. the spins will, sti will still be, uh, they're, they're already relegated to a secondary page. Okay. So. Thanks for the clarification. All right, that's been a uh, barrel of kittens. So um, <laughs> thank you very much. And if you, uh, I'll let you wrap up, but I would just say we can continue these discussions on the Fedora mailing list. So. Certainly. Um, and, I, and I fully recognize that, there, that the Fedora mailing lists can be difficult to separate the, the uh, wheat from the chaff, but uh, it, it is the, source, the canonical source of record for the decisions we try to make. Thank you very much.